What is up, people? It is a beautiful Thursday afternoon. No, it's definitely the morning still, feeling that a little too hard. And I'm out here just outside of kind of downtown-ish Edmonton. Megan had an appointment, so I figured I would come out and try and get some cool shots. I need something to fill up my Instagram. So I thought, how can I make this creative? How can I do something a little bit different? And recently, Conch, who we've met in the vlog before, showed me this cool effect that's happening right now in a lot of music videos. It's an effect that's seen in Mira Massa's music video for what if I go? Or if you prefer to watch a music video with a whole lot more butts in it, then you can watch Broccoli by Dram. So me and Conch the other day tried to shoot one of these, but without the actual equipment that is typically used for this. And this is how it turned out. So as you can see, the general idea is that your subject is kind of staying still and it's almost like, it's almost like the bullet time from the Matrix where like the camera is kind of moving around the subject, but because they're still, it looks like time is kind of frozen. And then it's also got the kind of boomerang thing that we see a lot on Instagram where it's an animated thing going back and forth. So I found a cool way that I can do that without actually having to have the original equipment that it required. So I figured I'd double up on creativity I come out downtown, I try and get some shots like that, but then also add the lens ball into it. Last week I posted my first photo using the lens ball and people were really loving it. So I thought there's gotta be a way that I can combine the Miramasa 3D picture effect with the lens ball. So that's what we're gonna try today. But before we do any of that, we gotta get breakfast. We're just chilling in the car before Megan's hair appointment. She is tiny and fits with her feet up on the dash. <laughs> How's breakfast? Anyway, back to the photography stuff. When Khan showed me that effect, of course, I did what any sane person would do, and I went straight to YouTube to figure out how the heck it was done. I found this video. It was a Justin Odisho video where he explained that it's actually a specific camera. It's a, an old film camera from the 80s, and it's got four different exposures on the piece of film, so it's actually taking four side-by-side -side pictures at the same time. And when you take those pictures and you put them in sequence, in a video sequence or a animated GIF sequence, then you get that cool effect where it kind of has like this parallax. So the subject in the foreground isn't moving, but the whole background kind of feels like it is. A little tough to explain, but it feels like 3D space. So what I hope to accomplish is to actually get that same effect, but with the lens ball, because you see all sorts of lens ball photos. So I just kind of wanted to try and get a little bit more creative with the lens ball effect. So first I'm gonna try and get a shot of Wayne here with the effect before I introduce the lens ball. So the way that I do this is that I try and mimic the four shots that you would get with the old 80s camera. The beauty of the 80s camera is it takes the four shots at exactly the same time. So you're actually totally freezing time. So if you have something that's moving fast, it's gonna to totally freeze it. In my case, I can't quite get that same effect, but what I can do is if I have a subject that's standing still, like, I don't know, a stand you or something like that or like in the example of conch I just got him to stand really still and so it kind of looks like you're getting the four shots at the same time then I set my camera like the high speed shooting so I think it takes like 11 frames per second or something like that so once you set your camera to take the shots in succession like that you just have to move your camera slightly so that it looks like the four different shots that it would be taking with that old camera so we're gonna try that now I can't feel my fingers, it's so friggin' cold out here. It's like minus 12 degrees Celsius and I didn't bring gloves like a genius. 
So I think I got my shot of Wayne. So next I'm gonna try and get, there's this cool background here. I've used it before for another photo shoot, but I'm gonna try and bust out the lens ball and see if I can get some. plan was definitely to be out here a little bit longer, get a couple more shots, but that's gonna have to do because I, I actually can't feel my hands right now, so. Okay, so the bad news is that I might lose a finger or two from freezing, but the good news is that I'm now inside Rogers Place, the arena here, and uh, things are warming up a little bit. And I found a cool spot to try and take another set of photos, so I'm gonna try and get one more lens ball 3D thing here, and then uh, I'm gonna head back. I think I got some cool shots. Some of uh, Wayne here. A couple of the cool overpass thing. And then some from inside. So let's head back home and I'll tell you guys how I edit these guys up. And we're back. Clean myself up a little bit, ready to go. I have the files all imported into the computer, so now it's just a matter of actually taking them and making that animation out of them. So step number one is going to be to edit them however you want. So if you're happy with the files the way that they came out of the camera, great. If not, then pull them into Lightroom or whatever editing software you use, edit them up. Just make sure that you don't crop anything differently from one photo to the next in the sequence and try and edit them all the same too. So the way that I do that is in Lightroom. I'll edit one of the photos in the sequence and then I'll just sync the settings across the whole sequence so they all have the same thing. I export all of them in the sequence even though there's like 20 of them we're only going to end up using probably four or five of them. I'll export all of them, put them in a folder and then we're going to pull them into Adobe Premiere to do the actual animation of it. So assuming that you've got the editing side of it done let's go into Adobe Premiere and I'll show you how this is done. Waiting for Premiere to open. Okay, so I've imported all the photos into Adobe Premiere and I've put them in their own folder so I can find them easy. Now I'm basically just gonna go through and pick my favorite four or five photos that I think will make the best animation. Usually what I'm looking for here is the subject in the center of the view and I'm gonna make that kind of the middle photo. So I'll pick two photos on either side. So we'll end up with five, two before, two after, and then the one in the middle. Once I pick the photos that I like the best, I'm gonna drag one down to start a new sequence and then actually delete that and then drag in the five that I want, making sure that I start with the first one so that they're in sequential order. Once I get them all in, I'm gonna highlight them all and hit Command R, and that'll bring up the clip speed slash duration. And this is going to allow me to set each of those clips to a certain length. So what you wanna do is make sure you click the little link to unlink the speed and duration. And then what you're gonna do is type in one frame and click the ripple edit shifting trailing clips. Now what this is gonna do, it's gonna set each clip, each photo to one frame long, and then it's gonna make sure it snaps them all together so there's not a bunch of space in between. Now we're gonna zoom in so we can see it. And then to make the loop effect happen, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the second last one and copy it, holding option and dragging it. We're gonna copy it to the end, and the third last one, copy it to the end, and the fourth last one, or the second one, to the end. So now we should have a full loop. We don't copy the last one or the first one because those are the ones that it's looping on. You don't want there to be two frames in a row of the same thing. So we should have a total of eight frames going on here. And so if you want to check the loop, you can actually add loop to your options on your program panel by going into this little extra menu, and then you can turn on the loop. If you don't see it, you can hit the plus sign and add the loop to your program panel, and then we can check it. Now what I found was that if I did it so that each photo was only one frame, I found it to be a little bit too quick. And once I went back and watched the Miramasa effect in their video too, I noticed that it was a little bit slower. So I actually went back, highlight them all again, Command R so I get up that speed thing. I keep all the same settings and I change it to two frames each. And I found that to be a little bit better. Yeah, that looks way better. 
And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna crop this in so that it's the right size for Instagram. We want that five by four. So we're gonna change it from 1280 by 1920 into 1280 by 1600. And this has to do with to the, how I exported the photos. You may have to mess with where the pictures are, where the each photo is in the frame because you've just cropped out the top and bottom. So in this one, I'm gonna have to move it up. So I'm gonna highlight that one that I've already moved. I'm gonna hit copy. I'm gonna highlight all the other ones and then I'm gonna do something called paste attributes. And that's gonna basically put them all to the same crop. So now we have our complete Instagram size Miramasa effect animated boomerang type thing. And then of course I'm gonna apply this to the other two shots that we got. So I got another one, a little bit of a darker lens ball kind of thing. I'm gonna pick the five. I'm gonna put them all in two frames each and it's gonna look like this, pretty cool. And then lastly, we're gonna to go to Wayne Gretzky. And we're gonna apply the same thing. Pretty cool. Now the last thing that I did is I actually copied it out so that it would be 15 seconds. 15 seconds of this back and forth is probably enough on a loop. So I figured that was probably a good length for these guys. So I made them 15 seconds and I exported them. A couple of little tips. When you're shooting these, you wanna try and make sure that whatever it is you're shooting is very still. Like I said before, if you don't have the actual camera that has four exposures coming at the same time, you can't totally freeze motion. So what you want to do is try and find something that's already fairly still to start with. For example, a statue of Wayne Gretzky is a perfect example. I had a little bit of trouble dealing with the lens ball ones because as I was moving the camera, I found myself also moving my hand with the lens ball in it a little bit. So I needed to keep it a little bit more still and make sure that I was just moving the camera because ideally you want to make it look like it's actually four separate exposures or five separate exposures rather than someone moving their camera. In my case, each exposure is actually happening after the last one. So it's a little bit of a trade-off, but it still gives you a very similar effect and I found it really effective. Another little thing that I found is depending on what you set your timeline to in Premiere, so whether you're at, let's say, 30 frames per second or 24 frames per second, it's gonna change it a little bit. So it's gonna go a little bit faster if you're playing it back at 30 frames per second. I preferred the 24 frames per second, so that's what I ended up exporting all of these in but you can choose based on what you like. And before I wrap it up here, I wanna say a huge thank you. This was all kind of for my Instagram and while I was out shooting these photos, I actually crossed 5,000 followers on Instagram. So thank you so much for following me. If you haven't already, you'll see these cool effects up on there this week. So make sure to go follow me at Dunna Did It. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up. It really does help. Subscribe to the channel if you're not already and I'll see you guys next time. Do I look like I'm doing it? Am I doing it? Yeah, it doesn't work.